Jaydev Galla. Sir, today is the New Year's for Telugus, Kannadigas, Marathis, and Sindhis. Sri Hevalambi Nama Samatsara Ugadi Subhakanchlu. A very happy Ugadi, happy Gudi Padwa, happy Chetty Chand to all who are celebrating the New Year's Day today, sir. Sir, we couldn't have asked for a more auspicious day to pass the most important economic reform since the dismantling of the License Raj in 1991. Back then, this created a phase change from the Hindu rate of growth of 3 to 5 percent to a new level of 5 to 7 percent, even touching 9 percent a few times. With the GST tax regime, I am sure that the stage is being set to touch the double-digit growth rate in the very near future, sir. Sir, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to take part in this historic debate. It is historic because it is the biggest tax reform that the country has ever undertaken since its independence, and this tax reform is the need of the hour. Due to existing complex web of taxes, complicated tax structure, and cumbersome compliances before multiple authorities. It is equally historic, though only procedural, that never in the history of Indian Parliament has ever four bills been discussed together. So we are sitting here to create history, and I'm happy to become a part of this historic move, which is for the betterment of the people of this country. So I, on behalf of my Telugu Desam party, wholeheartedly support these bills and congratulate, compliment, and bow before the patience of the Honorable Finance Minister for 12 marathon meetings of the GST Council and every meeting lasting between 10 to 12 hours for giving final shape to this gigantic and Herculean task and bringing it before the House for its consideration and passing. So hats off to the Honorable Finance Minister and his team for ushering in a new economic era of efficiency, transparency, accountability, and compliance. Sir, with this GST regime, in PPP terms, India becomes the largest single market that has such a tax regime, sir. Only US and China are larger economies in PPP regime. Neither of them are single markets. So we are moving ahead of both China and USA in terms of implementing this historic change, sir. I can say with authority that no power on earth can stop the implementation of this tax reform. I'm saying this because the Constitution Amendment Bill, which was blocked by the elders in the Rajya Sabha last year on trivial grounds, now I don't think that they have any weapon to stop this, as the Honorable Minister has rightly said while replying to the Finance Bill, that at all costs, GST will become a reality from 16th September 2017. Since the Constitution Amendment Bill we had passed permits only one year to collect taxes, and after one year, you are barred from collecting any taxes. Of course, it will become a reality from 1st July this year itself, sir. Had it been cleared last year, we would have been sailing on the GST by now. Anyhow, as the idiom goes, better late than never. We are going to clear this tax reform now, sir. Sir, earlier GST could not sail through when the UPA tried in 2011 because four of its own CMs opposed the bill lock, stock, and barrel. They were opposing because there were a tremendous trust deficit between the center and the states. Now the situation is entirely different, and the states have started tr trusting Modi ji, more particularly after increasing the devolution of taxes and giving emphasis on cooperative federalism. Now that every word of these legislations is scrutinized and approved by the finance minister of every state, including Andhra Pradesh, there is little room to find any loopholes. But taking advantage of this opportunity, I wish to make a few points which need clarification from the finance minister. Sir, here I remember what one of the founding fathers of America and the renowned polymath, political theorist, scientist, author, and inventor, Benjamin Franklin said in 1789, and I quote, in this world, nothing can said to be certain except for death and taxes. So taxes are certain like death, and taxes are here to stay. But the only point is, in which form and to what extent, and sir, the House should agree with me when I say that taxes are inalienable in the growth story of any nation, and India is no exception to this. Sir, I begin with my submissions from my state of Andhra Pradesh as to how GST impacts Andhra Pradesh, which after bifurcation is reeling under severe financial crisis. GST benefits consuming states, 
but it is the other way around when it comes to Andhra Pradesh. Due to implementation of GST, we are going to lose 2,000 crores annually, even though after bifurcation, we are reduced to a consuming state, sir. AP is losing because there is a reduction in tax from 14.5% to 9%, and exemptions given to in CST, R&D CES, HRBT, entertainment tax, luxury tax, and due to remove a, removal of tax on food grains. And once GST is introduced, AP would lose 2,000 crores annually, sir. Before coming to various clauses of the bill, bills, I have a couple of points to make on the Constitution Amendment Act, as a consequence of which the bills we are discussing are before us. First point I wish to make is relating to Section 19 of the Constitution Amendment Act, which says that the union may, compens may compensate states for loss of revenue arising on account of implementation of GST for five years. Clause says union may compensate and not shall compensate. AP has been doomed and gloomed and reeling under this very word may, which has been used left, right, and center in a clumsily drafted AP Reorganization Act. And now a ridiculous argument given by some sections that may does not bind government of India to discharge its obligation towards it. So I would like that the word may should be substituted with the word shall. Only then it will be binding on the government of India to compensate the states, sir. Secondly, I request the finance minister to favor favorably consider extending the five-year period to 10 years for Andhra Pradesh as a special case, looking at its pathetic fiscal position, sir. I said in the beginning, and FM has rightly said, while replying to the, replying to the debate on GST in Rajya Sabha, that states were not trusting the UPA-led center at the time because center did not pay them the CST dues running into thousands of crores apart from other things. And he convinced the states by giving an assurance that government of India will pay CST dues one third at different intervals to bring states on board. Sir, it is not at different intervals, but it should be paid in quarterly installments, just as the center's timeline for collection of taxes from subscribers, sir. Now taking this point further, I wish to submit that AP also has huge CST dues, and I had also raised it in this very house earlier. Sir, the dues of AP in regard to CST compensation is to the tune of 7,269 crores. Let me give the breakup, sir. For 12, 13, 935.74 crores was undivided share of AP. In 13, 14, 2,247 crores was the share of AP. And up to January 2014, it was 618 crores. So if we calculate till division of the state, the dues were 3,801 crores. After bifurcation from July 14 to March 2015, the dues are 1,467 crores. And in 15, 16, the dues are 200 crores. 16, 17 figures have not come yet, sir. So if you calculate, the total comes to 7,269 crores. Now, as per my calculation, 6,000 is yet to be paid to AP. But I request the finance minister to please inform us as how much center has so far paid to Andhra Pradesh, how balance is going to be paid, and by when the CST dues are going to be cleared. Thirdly, since the threshold limit per registration is enhanced 20 lakhs from the existing 7.5 lakhs, about 75,000 dealers out of 2.4 lakhs will be out of the GST system in AP. So AP is also losing some amount due to increase in threshold limit, and AP was demanding for keeping the threshold limit at 10 lakhs. But GST Council pegged it at 20 lakhs. So with this, subscriber base has shrunk in AP, and I'm sure the finance minister will do something for us in this regard. Sir, we all know that we are graduating from the existing complex tax web to a more rational tax regime. IT infrastructure during the GST regime for compliance has to be put in place as early as possible for success, successful implementation of GST. It is not an easy task, sir. I welcome that a special purpose vehicle is proposed to be set up to provide IT infrastructure and the service backbone. I only suggest that every state has to be equipped to be ready for graduating from the existing tax structure to GST. Here I wish to make a point. The report of the select committee also contains this in paragraph 3.38. The SPV that the government is going to create under section 125 of the Companies Act is supposed to provide IT infrastructure to states and center. Here you have given 30% shareholding in SPV to private banks like HDFC, ICICI, and HDFC Limited. And conspicuously, not even a single nationalized bank has been given any shareholding in the SPV, sir. 
What are the reasons behind ignoring our own PSU banks, and which play such a pivotal role in GST? I request the Finance Minister to please explain this, sir. Sir, the basic principle of any taxation is to have similar taxation on any two similar sectors to have a level playing field. There are two sectors, NBFC and CHIT fund companies, which do similar activities of collecting money from subscribers and giving them as loans to earn profits and distribute them among subscribers. But under taxation, there's a discrimination be between NBFCs and CHIT fund companies. For example, while 90% of earning of NBFCs is, ex is exempted from tax, whereas only 30% of CHIT fund commissions is exempted from service tax. The treatment, in spite of the fact that they are doing similar business, is different. Secondly, there are 30,000 registered CHIT funds in the country with an annual turnover of over 40,000 crores, while there are 10 times this number that are unregistered. Thirdly, now CHIT funds attract 15% service tax and it is going up to 18% under the GST. So the All India Association of CHIT funds have been requesting for exempting them from service tax or keeping them at 4% slab is genuine and hence I request the Honorable Finance Minister to consider their demand favorably. Please conclude now. Yeah, I'm just coming, sir. Sir, the, I'll just skip to a, a few last point and then conclude, sir. Sir, there is no doubt that GST brings smiles in some sectors and agony to others, and it impacts some of the flagship schemes as well. I will give one example, sir. The solar industry is a sunrise sector where the government is putting a lot of emphasis and aiming to produce one lakh megawatts of solar power by 2022. But if you look at the study of the ministry on the implica implement implications of GST, it increases the cost of renewable energy. For solar energy, it is likely to raise the cost by 12 to 14 percent because the industry is currently exempted from countervailing duties and central excise duty on import of solar modules. These exemptions will be removed once the GST comes into operation. There is no doubt that this will help our domestic PV module manufacturing industry by making it more cost competitive when compared to imported ones, which otherwise is 30 to 40 percent more. Whereas the raw material intermediaries needed for module manufacturing are exempted from customs duty and central excise duty. Sir, so, last point and I'm concluding, sir. <coughs> Secondly, VAT is levied by various states at various rates and the same is not applicable to imported modules. Therefore, it adds an extra cost to the domestic solar modules and makes them less competitive and more expensive by the time it reaches the consumer. Thirdly, the proposed rate of 18% is also much higher than what is now being paid by the industry. So I request the Honorable Minister to consider policy implica implications of GST in areas of strategic interest, such as Make in India and the National Solar Mission, and find a way out for this and protect domestic solar industry by prescri prescribing discounted tax rates uniformly for domestic and imported modules or exempt this from the purview of GST as is being done in the case of alcohol and petroleum products. Okay, thank you. In conclusion, I am sure GST will usher in a new horizon and play a crucial role in the growth trajectory of the country. I am saying this because the law is logical, clear, practical and convenient to comply with. But I only caution the Honorable Finance Minister that implementation mechanism must match up with the ever-evolving business dynamics. With these words, I once again support the bill. Thank, thank you, you, sir.